in in a few minutes. Um, well, hi everyone and welcome to today's Women for Women session on virtual volunteering. My name is Andrea Young and I'm with the Richardson Chamber and the Women in Leadership Committee. And we have been able to bring you, I think, five Women for Women virtual events since April and we still have more planned for later this year. Um, we've had a lot of fun putting these things together. Our Women in Leadership quarterly luncheon will be held virtually next Wednesday, September the 2nd at noon, titled Courageous Conversations About Race. And that's going to be about how you can have what can be a complicated conversation in the workplace. You can find out more about that on the Richardson Chamber website calendar, which you can find at richardsonchamber.com slash events slash calendar. And we will also send out more information about that event in the follow-up email after this presentation. I would like to take just a minute to thank our Women in Leadership Program sponsors who support the mission and goals of the Women in Leadership Program to bring quality content and leadership opportunities to women in the Richardson business community. Our title sponsor is uh, Methodist Richardson Medical Center, represented by our, on our committee by Jana Rant, and our associate sponsor is Texas Bank and Trust, represented on our committee by Cindy Jackson. They have both been longtime sponsors of the Women in Leadership Committee, and we are so thankful for their commitment to this program. Just a couple of housekeeping items before, before we start. Um, we ask that you mute your microphones during the main part of the presentation so we won't have all that background noise. And also towards the end of the presentation, we're going to go into small breakout rooms of about four to six people for several minutes for some small group networking. If you haven't used breakout rooms before in Zoom, and probably at this point, I think most of us have, um, they're very easy to navigate and it will be just like you're in a smaller Zoom meeting. You'll be invited to join the breakout right here from this Zoom meeting and you'll just click join and then I'll bring everyone back out to this main discussion all at the same time. And now I would like to introduce Dana Shepard who chairs the Women for Women subcommittee. Dana is with the Bank of America and she has been the champion of the Women for Women program for several years. It is her desire that the Women in Leadership program offer a forum for peer mentoring and small group discussion outside of our larger quarterly luncheons. And we are very grateful to her for her dedication to this. Dana? Thank you, Andrea, and thank you for all you do to, to keep this going and uh, all the behind the scenes work and in, in front of the camera like you've been doing. I'm happy to do it. Could not do it without you, that is definitely for sure. So welcome everyone, we're very, very glad you can be here today. and We're very thankful for our speaker, Helen Dorsey, who's going to talk to us about virtual volunteer efforts. Helen is the Texas Volunteer Coordinator for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas, where she's responsible for employee engagement programs. Prior to Blue Cross Blue Shield, she also worked for a Silicon Valley startup and at a national um, soft drink company. She's also been a consultant providing marketing and public relations support for local and national clients, including City of Dallas, Parkland Health Foundation, and the NBA. She's a born and raised Texas girl and lives in Garland with her husband, David, she has two adult sons and two grandchildren, Dallas and Denver. She's shifted during COVID to uh, professional and personal volunteer efforts virtually. And she's gonna help us talk. She's gonna share some information today about some of those efforts and ways that we can get involved as well. So thank you again, Helen, and uh, over to you. You're welcome. I'm so excited to be here and I'm gonna jump right into um, the slideshow that I have uh, set up for you today. Now, you should know that um, I am um, a passionate volunteer and I get the opportunity to connect our employees to uh, volunteering. And so as I begin to participate in some of the Richardson Chamber of Commerce events at one of the last uh, meetings, I thought, you know what, it would be nice to share some of those opportunities that I've personally been involved in and have benefited from because I know um, um, we all want to still be a part of our communities and be connected. And so what I would like to share with you is a few of the volunteer opportunities that I'm personally connected with. And then um, if you so feel desired uh, interest, I will uh, have provided in this power packed PowerPoint uh, some information about those volunteer efforts. And um, if you want to connect further with a community partner, then all the information will be there and we'll provide that to you. 
So I'll, I'll jump right in because as uh, Andrea mentioned, at the end, we want to allow enough time to do some networking and to learn and um, just share a little bit more about uh, our own personal and professional experiences. So um, our uh, Blue Corps, our program at Blue Cross Blue Shield is called Blue Corps. And it's not a military name. This is something that we have used to reflect our volunteer engagement. Uh, I have a, a photo here that uh, ref is reflective of some of our volunteers in San Angelo at one of our community co partners called Meals for the Elderly. Um, as you can imagine, they provide meals for our seniors and, and uh, citizens that are shut in. Um, but the cool thing about it is, um, albeit that we are shut in, there are still lots of opportunities to be involved uh, from the comfort of your laptop or computer or iPhone, or in this particular instance, they uh, met with the representatives of Meals for the Elderly to um, congratulate them on our matching dollars program, which I'll share with you in a minute. Um, that cute character, that blue character is our Goodwill ambassador named Blue Bear. And uh, we thought it was neat when they set up the meeting to um, uh, provide the matching dollars check that Blue Bear was all ready. And so, um, as you know, with the CDC guidelines and COVID-19 and social distancing, uh, they snapped a cool shot uh, showing again, Blue Bear, our Goodwill ambassador being um, uh, social distancing and, of course, uh, being cognizant of our guidelines. There's two programs I want to share with you. Um, one is our um, recognition program. Uh, when I joined the company about three years ago, I was so excited about this program because uh, it's reflective of what we ask for our students from an educational standpoint. We have our own Blue Bear um, Honor Roll Recognition Program. And quite simply, it's a quarterly program. And based upon an employee's uh, volunteer hours, they can win some fun prizes. Uh, we award it on a quarterly basis. And there are three, um, three levels, bronze, silver, and gold. And so we encourage our employees to not only get connected with our community partners, but also to log their time. Because as you know, most companies, we track our, our community investment. On the right hand side, you'll see um, our biggest uh, employee recognition program, Volunteer of the Year. I'm sure you have something similar at your company. And it's an annual program. And what we do is we recognize our Volunteer of the Year for the wonderful work that they perform in the community. Pictured right there is Ryan Dugas. Um, from our Richardson office. And um, he, um, as winning the Volunteer of the Year Award, he uh, received a personal bonus and the company gives, um, uh, allows a winner to donate a thousand dollar check to a nonprofit of their choosing. Ryan has been volunteering for a number of years with an, um, an organization called Carry the Load. They're located in Dallas. And so when he won the award, he says, I, I'm so excited to be able to provide this funding to them. Um, as you know, in, um, especially now in this, in this time of COVID-19, a lot of our community partners are nonprofits. They're having some opportunities and challenges. Um, so um, this year earlier, um, Ryan uh, and I went over and um, as a winner of our Volunteer of the Year Award, he. Um, um, provided them with, we did the photo op uh, and uh, with the check uh, for that organization. The next opportunity uh, I wanted to share with you, just to give you a little bit more insight into our programs at Blue Cross Blue Shield, is our matching dollars program. Uh, we have uh, a program where I call it a, a match of sweat equity. For each hour of volunteer time that an, organ that an employee does with one of our community partners, the company kicks in 20 bucks. I think that's a cool opportunity because um, as you know, again, resources are very tight um, um, at our, our nonprofit partners, especially now. And so uh, with that $20 uh, match, I call it uh, an easy way that a volunteer can give some of their, their time and talent and then the company kicks in their treasure. Um, it is done on an annual basis and we cap it at $2,000 per uh, organization. 
uh, I bring this to you to share that with you because as we, as I begin to look at what was ahead of us uh, when COVID-19 hit in March, uh, one of the things that I was concerned about strategically is because of the traditional in-person volunteering uh, was minimized because of COVID-19 and the CDC guidelines, I was concerned, as you can imagine, naturally about us being able to uh, to provide some of those matching dollars. And so I immediately shifted, um, not only personally, but professionally, our programs uh, to virtual volunteering. And it's no mystery what virtual volunteering is. It's simply volunteering from the comfort of your laptop, your cell phone, or your, your digital device, uh, your digital device. Um, last year in 2019, uh, our employees logged over 52,000 uh, hours in the community, which netted uh, about $182,000 to our community partners. Pictured below uh, is, a, is a photo that was taken about two years ago at our Richardson headquarters with our community partners. Uh, at that point, we were still uh, doing the checks, uh, the, the official $2,000 checks uh, in, by hand. We now do it electronically, but as you know, there's always a photo op built into every community uh, event. And so that's just the photo op that we took at our, our Richardson headquarters office with some of our community partners uh, in Blue Bear um, to uh, again, thank them and then to recognize the work that was being done, not only by them, but then by our employees. Now I'm gonna switch and focus on a couple of the, uh, the virtual volunteer opportunities that I have personally uh, been a part of and then others that uh, I have shared with our employees at Blue Cross Blue Shield. The first one that you see in front of you is Big Brothers Big Sisters. I don't think this organization needs uh, um, an introduction because I hope you've heard of it where you're able to mentor a uh, middle or high school student. The thing that excited me when I got involved with Big Brothers Big Sisters is a program they call Mentor 2.0. The Mentor 2.0, I believe, is well suited for any busy mother, executive, uh, middle manager, uh, anybody who really wants to connect and help our, our students uh, be more successful. I am uh, a big sister to Melissa at Irving High School, and the program uh, is pretty straightforward. Each week, uh, I, we meet on an online platform and we trade a few emails on this platform. And then once a month, I go over to Irving High School and then we meet in person after school with all the other big brothers and big sisters uh, for, the, for their class. And we have a chance to network and talk about how school going. Of course, we talk about future plans. Uh, and uh, I love this model because for the busy person and we're all some at some point we all have family uh, and weekends and kids and sports but it allows me to reach back into classroom and help her or help a student see a path that they would not normally see and so uh, it's all totally orchestrated and coordinated by the big brothers big sisters organization um, it's an online platform and once a month I will go over to Irving High School and we all meet and um, um, talk and, and meet personally with our kiddos. Now in this COVID-19, um, they still have the online platform. I obviously will not be on campus, on Irving High School campus, but I'm still able to maintain that connection with Melissa, uh, my uh, little. And so I would encourage you if you're looking to be connected um, this is a good uh, an opportunity for you to, again, reach back and touch a youth in our classroom. Uh, Caprice Hawkins is my, um, is my contact. Uh, and as a matter of fact, they shared with me the school year, as you know, has started and they still need some more mentors. They have about 100 students that are waiting for a big brother, big sister. Um, and so if you're interested, I'd love to connect you with Caprice. Now, this organization obviously needs no introduction at all. Everyone knows a Girl Scout. Uh, as I pivoted our programs from uh, traditional in-person to virtual volunteering, I reached out to the Girl Scouts and they actually reached out a little bit earlier to me. Um, as most organizations have, they had to pivot. And so one of the interesting opportunities they brought to my attention this summer was a virtual job shadowing pro program. I'm like, 
virtual job shadowing, how is that going to work? And so Sarah, my contact said, quite simply, um, they had uh, enrolled the girls in the traditional summer programs and the girls had identified what careers they were interested in. And then based upon that, they went into their database and began to talk to companies and corporations and looking for uh, uh, organizations that had the careers that the girls were interested in. And so um, she said, hey, we have three students here who are interested in, in nursing, they're interested in healthcare. Can you find three, um, three women at Blue Cross Blue Shield to do the virtual job shadow? And I did, I did. Um, one in particular um, that I'll speak about is Hannah was the Girl Scout and Brianna uh, was the mentor at Blue Cross Blue Shield. And it was an easy setup. Again, they provided the platform for it. And essentially, Brianna and Hannah met online and Brianna uh, um, was able to share with Hannah what her job responsibilities are at Blue Cross Blue Shield, how she's operating, doing her work from the comfort of her home, and um, was able to answer any questions that uh, Hannah had regarding um, um, health care. As a matter of fact, Hannah is a, she's a student, um, she is a graduating senior and she wanted to be a nurse. And so Brianna was able to answer some of her questions about, okay, now explain to me this other side. You work at a healthcare company, Blue Cross. Uh, if I go into nursing, how does this all work? And so Brianna was able to share with her on the other side of what healthcare looks like, what does, um, how hospitals work with healthcare providers like Blue Cross Blue Shield. As a matter of fact, um, when I got some information back from Brianna, she was like, oh, Helen, I was so excited about this because she was a Girl Scout. Uh, from Lubbock, Texas, and uh, when she saw the opportunity, she said, oh my goodness, I, I was a Girl Scout, I know how it feels, and I'd be more than willing, and so um, they, we connected the two, again, through uh, Girl Scouts, and so it was a wonderful experience, not only for Hannah, the student, but for Brianna, our um, Blue Cross Blue Shield employee. So, uh, if you are a Girl Scout or you've been a Girl Scout or you want to just, you know, help and, and that way you have an interest, the virtual uh, job shadow is one project that they brought to my attention. However, there are a ton of other opportunities. Sarah will talk your ears off. She's got a lot of programs that they're in and work that they're trying to do with the Girl Scouts because as most nonprofits, they want to keep the programs alive and vibrant. And so there, uh, if you remember Girl Scouts always are working on badges, there's some other opportunities. Um, so all of that's there uh, loaded into the slide, the contact information. But again, if you're interested, uh, Sarah would love to hear from you uh, about virtual volunteer opportunities with the Girl Scouts. This next organization, um, uh, BNA, Visiting Nurses Association, uh, we've been affiliated with them for a number of years. And uh, as you know, uh, the VNA Visiting Nurses Association here in the Dallas uh, area, they provide the meals for our senior and our elderly. And so they have two opportunities that if you're so inclined um, to be a part of, one is called their virtual days of caring and then the second is their uh, adopt a senior and that's more for holiday uh, gift giving um, but the virtual day of caring i love that because as you know in this in this environment of COVID 19 our um, seniors um, are there's feelings of isolation and just being unconnected they are still receiving their meals um, but the uh, <clears throat> ability for a volunteer to to help and just make a call to them, say, hey, how are you doing, Mrs. Snow? Are you okay? Do you have any medical needs? Um, the volunteers in this uh, virtual environment would make calls to our seniors. They would be given a designated route. They would make calls to the seniors and check on them to make sure they're okay if they have any needs. Uh, they would intake that information and then they would make sure to get it back to the VNA using their app, their app that they have, and then the VNA staff member would follow up with that senior uh, to address and make sure those needs are being taken care of. Again, there's no mystery right now. COVID-19 has impacted a lot of our, our, um, our populations and our seniors are now our most vulnerable ones at this point. Um, Tracy Demery is my contact. 
all the information is there. And I apologize for having so, so many words on the slide. That's normally not my, uh, not my uh, method. Uh, however, when I reached out to my community partners, they gave me everything. And so I tried to edit the slides as much as possible down. There's enough information there for you to see if there's an interest or not. Um, and the contact um, information. So I apologize. I normally my slides are not that um, not that uh, worried. Moving right along, this next organization, Vogel Alcove, is here in the Dallas community, uh, and um, they uh, brought to my attention a program called Story Time. If you don't know about Vogel Alcove, I'm still learning uh, about them, um, but they serve women who are homeless. Um, these women will go to their jobs um, and the, they will bring their children to Vogel Alcove. And during the Vogel, during, at their stay at the Vogel Alcove, they'll do the traditional uh, daycare um, um, things. And so one of the opportunities they, they saw for this virtual environment was story time. And story time quite simply means typically they would have a volunteer that would come in and read a story to the, to the, to the kids. But now when this virtual environment, the basically the story would be online. And so choose your favorite book uh, for a, a, a child from birth to four and you read the story and then you videotape yourself and you upload it to them and then they make it available to the kiddos at their, at their uh, center. Now, the fun thing about this one is we all have friends and family members who love to act. So if you've got some folks that love, love to uh, be a part and video and all the production and all that kind of stuff, this is a, a, an awesome opportunity for you because you choose a, a children's story and then you can do it individually or you can uh, do it within a family or you can do it with coworkers. As a matter of fact, a lot of these opportunities, they're not necessarily limited to you. Uh, as I've talked to my community partners, I said, hey, Helen, we'd love to have uh, uh, additional content. So if it's outside of Blue Cross Blue Shield for others, uh, team events, um, uh, they love it. So uh, again, here is another loaded sheet uh, with information. Um, Heather was kind enough. She gave me a lot of information and a lot of tips for success if you decide that you want to engage with the story time opportunity. Uh, but just know, again, there's so much out there, whether it's for our, our young ones or our senior citizens or our, our kiddos in between. There are a lot of ways that you can be connected to our nonprofit community partners here during this time of COVID-19. I've got maybe two more and then um, if there's any questions that are, that are bubbling up, I know um, Dana and Andrea said they'd be my co-captains here. And so uh, if you guys have any questions, I'd love to entertain those questions as we go along or at the end. The American Red Cross, again, no introduction. I am a Red Cross volunteer. Uh, I have shifted my uh, work with them to be more virtual, but I wanted to share with you uh, my, my um, contact, Cynthia Matthews, provided me a couple of opportunities that you can be involved in with the American Red Cross. We know right now that as you see in the, in the, on the radar, there's uh, all of these hurricanes and storms that we are encountering right now. Well, albeit we are in this, in this pandemic right now, they still have opportunities where you, again, you do not need to leave your home, where you can help them uh, in uh, providing services uh, for their impacted members. So for example, if you love social media, uh, they need media, social media ambassadors to help get the word out. Um, there's also a way where if you wanted to be, uh, help them contact some of our service members, that's an opportunity. Um, the virtual volunteer presenters, I'm actually getting in, uh, training for the pillowcase presenter uh, program. Um, <clears throat> as you know, when a fire occurs, the American Red Cross and the firemen are the first people on the scene. Well, they have a wonderful program where you could um, um, uh, explain to uh, families about uh, how important it is to uh, leave their residence when a fire occurs. Um, and the pillowcase is a way to uh, quickly pull together a few things that you may need and then get out of the house. 
So um, they have a lot of opportunities for virtual volunteer where you do not have to leave, again, the comfort of your home. Um, Cynthia Matthews is my contact picture there and they would love some of the extra help. My final <clears throat> um, uh, volunteer opportunity I'd like to share with you is Junior Achievement. Uh, I hope you're familiar with the work they do. They're a national well-known organization. They're actually headquartered and based in, in Richardson. And their goal is to inspire young people uh, to um, be successful. And I call it successful not only locally, but from a global standpoint, because as you know, the world has become even smaller uh, and our kids will be competing with international students and all over. And so they have, again, a chock full of virtual volunteer opportunities uh, for you uh, if you're interested in that model. I'll tell you specifically, uh, I've already participated. I've been a, a junior achievement um, volunteer in the classroom. And as I reached out to them this year uh, within this COVID-19 uh, environment, um, they had uh, shifted from their in-person traditional speaker series where you go on campus and you talk about your career to uh, a virtual um, environment. And quite simply, um, they have um, an opportunity for you to present your career, uh, to talk about your path, what degree you have, what do you do at your respective company, uh, what challenges you have, what, in, what opportunities you've been, encountered, and how you basically uh, have made your path from high school into, um, into a corporate environment, a work environment. And so I have participated in that. I videotaped my career talking about how I arrived at Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, what my path was, what degree that I have, and uh, challenges and opportunities I've had in my career. Uh, so again, they have a whole host of virtual volunteer opportunities for you to be involved in. Um, Keisha would love to hear from you. Uh, they are, as I said, our uh, Junior Achievement is headquartered here in Richardson. So I'd hope that you guys would maybe be interested in a couple of their virtual opportunities. The last opportunity I'll talk to you about is uh, uh, one uh, near and dear to me. It's of our company. We have our own Caring for Children Foundation. Not sure if this is new to you or not. Uh, I didn't know Blue Cross Blue Shield had their own foundation. Uh, the foundation gets some degree of support from the company. However, it operates totally separate, totally separate board of directors, the whole nine yards. Um, the, uh, the Caravan is a major program for the Caring for Children Foundation. You'll see pictured right there is one of the care vans that they have. Uh, there's 10 vans that are located across the state of Texas and their work is making sure that the uninsured and underinsured kiddos have access to free vaccinations. You know uh, that you cannot go to any school in Texas without having your immunizations. And so the care van provides those services free to parents uh, that are uninsured and underinsured. As a matter of fact, you'll see the photographs I volunteered just recently within the last two weeks. Um, we held one of our clinics at, at Forest Medical, uh, Forest Meadow Junior High. Uh, it's right on the, it's actually listed as a Dallas address, but it's a Richardson school. And what you'll see there uh, is a shot of the van parked in front of the school. But then also you'll see right in the lower, you'll see, um, uh, one of our nurses uh, giving an immunization to one of the, the young students that were there. I can't show faces, obviously, for, uh, for privacy, but uh, it was actually there and I took that shot. The other photo you'll see right there is as we concluded the clinic, the nurses um, that we had engaged to help us with some of the paperwork, uh, they, had a, they had a fabulous time. And so I asked them, could I take their photograph? And they said, sure. So that fun photo you see right there is uh, of some of the nurses who assisted us. They're from the Richardson uh, and Dallas corridor that came to help us facilitate this clinic. Uh, they didn't give the shots, but they help us go through the paperwork that's associated with it. And so um, our Caring for Children Foundation, uh, as most organizations, um, they do have volunteer opportunities, some in person. And then if you're a shopper 
and I'm sure I do have a few shoppers on the on the call here. Um, they have a uh, they get a small percentage of your purchase from Amazon and from um, uh, Kroger's. Uh, both of those are rewards programs. Also, <clears throat> if you're interested in additional information, I put um, the website there. And then our Christine Kutnick, um, she is a Blue Cross Blue Shield employee, um, but she is the um, um, operations executive director for the Caring for Children Foundation. So if you're interested in more information about the foundation, feel free to reach out to her uh, directly. She will talk your ears off about the work that's being done. Uh, I think that's it. That concludes. Um, uh, what I wanted to share with you today. I hope you guys have gotten some great ideas. You've been really quiet or I haven't seen the chat, but I'll be sure to um, uh, answer any questions you may have about uh, some of these virtual volunteer opportunities. If you need me to connect you with a SOF or an e-introduction, I'm more than willing to do that. And um, my last slide, this is my family. All right, so this is my hubby, my two sons, my lovely Dallas and Denver, my daughter-in-law, and of course, that's Dixie. Dixie is my border collie who uh, is enjoying these neighborhood walks in this environment of COVID-19. So uh, I am, um, uh, that's it. I would love to entertain any questions or comments uh, that you have. As mentioned at the top of the, uh, this presentation, uh, it will be shared out with you. Uh, and uh, that's it. So anyone can unmute now if you have questions or type it directly in the chat, uh, but you can go ahead and do that now. Hey, okay. hold on. This is Susan. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate your presentation. Quick question. I, sure. Um, I'm working with the organization in Richardson, the um, they're part of the symphony and it's the kids um, in high school that are part of the symphony and they support the symphony. It's called the symphony league. And anyway, we're always looking for opportunities for the kids, the high school kids to um, help out in the community. Do you see, I mean, it's been going to be a challenge this year, trying to get them some opportunities in, in distant areas, but do you see any of these types of opportunities that would be that the kids could do? A lot of them are, are um, you know, obviously under 18. Uh, volunteer opportunities? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so um, um, I'm glad you mentioned that. So for the Visiting Nurses Association, one of the programs we've been doing with them for a while is called Write an Inspirational Card. You probably have heard of this, but um, um, uh, uh, one of the things that the VNA does is they deliver the meals. And so one of the things we've encouraged our employees to do, as well as our interns, we brought about uh, half a dozen interns on board this year, is to write an inspirational note that can go with the meal. Because as you know, the personal touch is, is sort of lost. And so um, I facilitated a um, online um, team building ex ex exercise with our interns where we asked them to pull out any paper, pencil, or any, um, uh, 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 supplies they have at home and then write an inspirational note to uh, a senior citizen. So that kind of idea, uh, that nugget of idea can apply very easily to an underage uh, uh, or not of age uh, student because at the end of the day, what we want to do and I think what you want to do is build that civic engagement. Right. Uh, part of part and I tell this all the time because I'm, I'm able to be a part of the new higher orientations. Part of the civic engagement is at some point you are may or may not have been exposed to volunteering and giving back to your community. And so uh, part and parcel of what we do is we encourage our employees to um, not only volunteer, but we ask them to bring along their, their students because you know uh, now uh, in order to uh, not only have strong academics, but colleges are looking for volunteer work. They're looking for leadership, what, you, what a child has exhibited while they're in high school. So we always encourage our employees to volunteer, be on the honor roll, and then we encourage them to bring along their, their students as well in some of these opportunities. So okay, long, so long answer to your question, but. Right, but it, could I, would I do that through you if I want that to be one of their 
community projects, I can reach out to you or? Yeah, I, you can reach out to me and then I can facilitate with the, the VNA, the Visiting Nurses Association. And for okay. any, any of these opportunities, I, I don't own these opportunities or ideas. Uh, I work with these community partners. They're looking to build the engagement at no matter whether it's Blue Cross or any of the other uh, organizations within the Richardson Corridor. So I can certainly okay. facilitate that, Susan. I like that idea. I like that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Well, if we, this is your last chance to ask a question if you've got one, but as soon as we're done with questions, we'll go into the, to the networking breakout room. So, so I jump out there. Question, question. But this is Beth and Helen, I just want to thank you again. That was a great presentation. As a long time passionate volunteer as well, yeah. <laughs> um, I really appreciate you letting us know that there still are some opportunities even during this unique environment. I, um, I thought I was still pretty in tune and apparently I'm not because um, I wasn't aware. So um, just thank you again for sharing um, this great information with us. You're welcome, you're welcome. Our community partners, uh, they're, they're, uh, it's unfortunate, um, but they've been impacted equally as we have sure. on a corporate side. As a matter of fact, when I began to reach out to them, they weren't quite ready because as we've had to pivot all of our employees from the work office back home, think about their resources being stretched uh, and having to provide laptops and monitors and all those tools so they can work remotely. So um, they, this, this COVID-19 has impacted everybody at every level across every spectrum. And so when I saw that, I knew that I wanted to continue to have that engagement with our employees. I knew we had that matching sweat equity on the table. Mm -hmm. I, I'll just be honest with you, I saw our numbers drop from first quarter and I knew when they everyone said go home that our, our community partners would be impacted as, as we have. And so I, that's why I strategically began to shift and I wanted to be able to still, you know, just stay connected and give back. So thank you for that, Beth. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, I think those are great, great suggestions. I know I heard some things that I'm personally I'm interested in getting involved in. Well, we have a couple of questions in the chat too. Um, so the first one from Ashley Claiborne is, do you all encourage and communicate these opportunities out to your employees at Blue Cross? And if so, how do you communicate them to the employee base? Absolutely, yes, we do. Uh, we have a very robust um, uh, communication system. Uh, we have a SharePoint system. And then we still have, we have a, a volunteer portal where employees can go on on the calendar and see what volunteer opportunities are available, uh, albeit in person or what we're calling virtual volunteer. So that's part and parcel of our, of our um, I call it of our DNA, our mission statement, to do everything in our power to support our, our communities. So yes, absolutely. And in this environment, everything is online now. And so we encourage it tremendously, especially, the, I love it when I sit there on the honor roll, because again, that means they're achieving some, uh, some level of engagement with our community partners. Right. That's great. Um, someone else had asked about contact info. So An Andrea just wanted everyone to know that we will send out the slideshow to everyone and, and Helen's contact info will be there in the presentation. So you'll have that as well. Any other questions before we go to the breakout rooms? Okay, well, we'll be here. We're not going anywhere. Uh, thank you, Andrea, and thank you, Dana, for being my wing women and facilitating this. Uh, I've enjoyed being a part of this, uh, each of the, the sessions and everything. So we're not going anywhere, we'll be here. So if you have a question today or tomorrow, just let us know. So I'm trying to arrange these rooms. I've had a few people drop off so that we're not, um, but the rooms are kind of even, uh, even in, I think we've got, we'll have three people per room now. So I'm going to open up these rooms and I will, Bring everyone back here automatically at about 5.55. Um, you can come back to the main room at any time or, or even leave the, um, if you need to leave the meeting, you can do that as well. You know what, I'm going to actually, I'm going to recreate these rooms because we've had several people drop off. So hang on just a second and bear with me here. Okay, now we're gonna have th three people per room. So I'm gonna go ahead and open those now and bring you back in just a little bit.
since we are again. Are we the only ones left? Oh, please. <laughs> are you serious? You've got to be joking. No, I don't think that worked. <laughs> no, surely there's somebody else back. Surely. Yeah, because Andrea, Andrea so. if nothing else, if we know Andrea oh, would be there. Are, are we the only ones left, Andrea? I think we have some attrition now, but... Um... <laughs> We all stayed, and they're coming back oh, now, right okay. now. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, it's like yeah, they there's a few of us the left. They didn't go back to class. Yes. Okay. We thought we were the only ones we, left. Only four. Only four standing soldiers. <laughs> yeah. No, Helen's got it right. <laughs> Nobody made it back. Aaron's class. still. Aaron's still here. <laughs> I'm here. That's about. That's okay. about half our group. So that's pretty good. No, yeah. Bell. <laughs> I like the whole breakout thing, though. It's pretty fun. Cool. It is. Mm -hmm. and it's to it is totally random even though i threw three geico ladies in together it just randomly did that so oh is it oh did you really <laughs> yeah it happens sometimes yeah i was wondering if that was random or not yeah you just say create this many rooms randomly split i try to make sure we have the same number of people in each room but it didn't it's just a random assignment so gotcha. oh, wow. okay. and we're going to do that for the for the main uh, women of leadership luncheon on Wednesday, we're going to do it from 11, like 11.30 to 11.50, we're going to have that same uh, networking experience, so. Okay. We're okay. going to try it out there as well. That'll be a bigger, a bigger audience, so we'll have more, way more breakout rooms, so it should be interesting. Hi, my guy, Hey, Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Oh. There she Here is. Here she is. <laughs> hey, how many people do we have signed up for that lunch? Just curious, or the... I think we're at about 60 right now. Pretty good. Yeah, sixty people. So and we'll get we'll get some more. I usually get at least a third more the last week. So I'm that's quite a bit. Right. Yeah. All right. I actually do have to pop off. So thank yeah. you very well, thanks much. Thanks for coming, everybody. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you guys. All right. All right. Bye, bye 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 guys. Bye Perfect. Michelle. Bye Virginia. Aaron. Bye. It was good talking to you. You too. <laughs> thanks, Leslie. Yep. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.